All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Locked on Avalanche. And on today's episode, a very, very special guest we have from Sportsnet producer Drew with us, lifelong Avalanche fan, Avalanche super fan. So we had to have him on to discuss how he's feeling, all the trials and tribulations he's been through as an Avalanche fan, and to finally be celebrating. How is he feeling now? And we will be getting to our very first grade of this season, and we do this alphabetically. So we have Nicholas Abe Kubel to get to. This should be a fun one. Let's get to it. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome aboard to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, everybody. Thank you for tuning in on this Tuesday edition and making this your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. Follow us on our social media outlets, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, opinions to Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com and follow us on our YouTube channel over on the YouTube. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And if you are watching on YouTube, you see a third person in our view, <laughs> yeah, hello down there. Uh, that is Mr. Producer Drew. You know him from Sportsnet and with Steve Dangle, and you know he is a super Avalanche fan. Thank you for joining this uh, on this special episode, Drew. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Do you have that opening read record like memorized, or do you read it off something? Because I'm very impressed if you memorize that. I memorized that. <laughs> He's one of the yeah, best. Yeah. He's one of the best. I wouldn't say that, but uh, I mean, when you do this day, I mean. This is episode, I think, like 558 or something okay, like that. Okay. So it's uh, it's kind of ingrained in my my sleep. <laughs> it's my sleeping patterns as I wake up reciting it. So, yeah. Fair. We'll get you to teach Dangle a few tricks then. Yeah, oh, God, no. <laughs> I could never do that. I, I think it's the other way around. I think he needs to teach me a few things. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, like people that follow Dangle, that you know, you always hear producer Drew and, you know, it's funny that. He is, you know, a, a huge in the Maple Leafs uh, world and just huge in the hockey world. And his producer is a diehard Avalanche fan. Uh, how? Let's just get to the good stuff right now. I mean, your, your the video that he had where he was, you know, doing the play by play, and then they won it. Have you fixed the the holes in your ceiling yet? From <laughs> yeah, jumping up and down. Uh, yeah, I haven't fixed the champagne stain in my ceiling though. I didn't know. <laughs> Uh, that when you sprayed champagne on dry, uh, champagne on drywall, it would like looks like someone peed on my roof. But I mean, I got rid of the smell, which is nice. Uh, okay, it stunk really bad. It was like champagne mixed with sweat, mixed with beer. I don't know. It's it was disgusting, but right. it was all worth it, man. Absolutely. I mean, what was what was going through your mind? Like, I guess start at the beginning of the season, and and with the the abs favorites again, and yep. just all of the stuff they had been through in the years prior. Did you start this season out with this is the year they're going to overcome it or it's, I uh, you know, I hope it's the year they overcome it or are we going to go through this second round crap again? This was the first year in a long time where I didn't care about the regular season at all. Like I'd watch the games, but no matter how bad they played or well they played, I was like, doesn't mean nothing. Doesn't mm. mean nothing until the playoffs hit. And yet again, the first round did well. And then round two hit and I was just like, oh, here we go again. When they blew mm. game five, I was like, oh, no uh same old story i mean thank god for darren helm that's all i gotta say i think once they won that series i was like they're winning the cup i i knew right then and there they got out that monkey off their back i was like they're too determined they're winning the cup yeah <laughs> blowing game five you are automatically panic that's what happens when you hang out with a maple Leafs fan um, yeah exactly but like <laughs> what about what about this team coming into this year like with the additions that they made in the offseason like with like i know you you have more of a working knowledge of Lekkonen and he was clutch for the Avs ever since they picked him up. Like, was that really when it started to turn for you? Like, okay, they might be for real here with these picks that they don't jump off the page at you where they're not like yeah. the, the big sexy move, like Claude Giroux. But when you see how they fit with this Avs team, is that where you really started to believe like this team's meant for more than just the second round? Honestly, it was when they got rid of Jost because I know uh, everyone loved Tyson Jost. I wasn't one of those people. Uh, I just thought he was just there for the entire time he was in Colorado. He wasn't special in any way, shape, or form. Once they got rid of him, knowing he was a fan favorite, I was like, okay, Sakic is serious now. I mean, I didn't know much about Nico Sturm coming back. Um, and then the acquisition of Manson. I know we all love the Colorado defense, but 
they're not very tough let's be honest and if mm-hmm. once they required acquired manson i was like all right this is it we haven't had a guy like this since zadorov and zadorov couldn't play defense particularly well besides the hitting um and he was like the better version of zadorov um so i think it wasn't even lucky i think it was manson once the manson mm. ball dice rolled i was like all right they're all in now but yeah coming into the year I knew something had to change on D, like toughness wise. So yeah, that's why the Manson uh, move blocked it in for me. You don't feel bad for Tyson Jost? Listen, Tyson Tuesdays <laughs> were stupid. Uh, I stand by that. I mean, Tyson Berry and Tyson Jost, both great guys off the ice. Uh, Tyson Berry loved that guy offensively. I don't know why some. I see some Avs fans hating on him. Like, you not remember what he did for the Colorado Avalanche? Like, liked like, the man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Him. He reminded me of John Michael Lyles, like the second coming yeah. offensive guy. Couldn't really play defense, but. I love Tyson Berry, but yeah, Joe, I don't feel bad for him at all. I mean, I feel bad that he didn't get his name on the cup, but I mean, he wasn't a good player. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he he's... He never I lived think, up to it. I'll give him that. Right. Like, he was I, okay. That's what we always yeah. say. Like, he just wore out his welcome in Colorado. He needed to go somewhere else, and maybe something will click in Minnesota. Who knows? But I, I think, like you said, like Ty, uh, Joe Sackick, I think, did as much as he could with Tyson mm-hmm. Joe's, and then it was just, it was time to move on, and if they're going to go all in, he was one of the guys that was a sacrificial lamb, basically. So, I mean, and let's be honest, like Nico Sturm wasn't that amazing when he came back. I mean, was he really like he's probably the least noticeable forward on their team in the playoffs? I think he was a little yeah. bit better physically than Tyson Jost and better on yeah. faceoffs. You know, yeah, I mean, faceoffs is where where he really shone. Like yeah. if you watched his live faceoffs, like and especially like at that point of the season, right after the trade deadline, the Avs were hurting at the faceoff dot. So Sturm. He wasn't noticeable anywhere else, but the face-offs is where he was noticed. Mm. So you guys think he's coming back then just because of the face-offs? Uh, it wouldn't surprise. I mean, he's not going to be a big number if yeah. you want to resign him. 1.1, so, maybe? If that. Uh, you know, and, and and if you get him, you throw him on the fourth line, you feel good that he, he's got some physicality and he can win some face-offs and he's good on the penalty kill. I don't think it would be horrible, uh, but I think it would depend on, on Sturm. I, I don't know if, where he wants to go, so... Fair. And we've yeah. and we mentioned like that Sturm contract. It's almost like the next generation Nieto contract. Like he's got his role. Like it's not going to really big be a big contract, but you know what he's there for. Yeah. Yeah. Nieto scored goals though. Let's not forget. Mm. So true. So true. Uh, if but with a training camp with Sturm, you think yeah, that fair, might fair be something might be better. You yeah, like especially one full training camp with this team, like it might be something here. We'll get to uh, some of the bigger name free agents uh, in the next segment, but I wanted to get get back to to this year's team and, and you know winning the cup. And you said you felt good once they got over the second round hump. Is it? But yeah. did did any feelings come back when they got into the cup final because they hadn't been there before? And you're going up against a team who has been. So did you? Was there any questioning uh, if if they can just? get that fourth win because that I think a lot of people were hanging on Tampa's been here before so never I was out. fairly confident they were going to win game six I posted a video on Twitter of me saying like just win it in Tampa rub salt in their wound like yeah. they did St. Louis um I saw on Reddit Tampa fans didn't like that um but well, I honestly think it was harder to beat St. Louis than the Tampa Bay Lightning I know people are like whoa mm-hmm. what are you talking about mm-hmm. I think St. Louis was a worse matchup for Colorado I mean there's bigger and slow them down Tampa couldn't do that because of their injuries, and then they couldn't keep up speed-wise. Once Game 2 happened and Colorado dominated and they went up 2-0, I mean, is Tampa really going to win 4 out of 5? Let's be honest. <laughs> That's kind of where, where I was coming from. And going back to Tampa for, for Game 6, I, it, you, you just listen to people, and it was just all you know, doom and glow. This is going 7. And I'm like, why would you think that? The Avs have been fantastic on the road in these, these playoffs, and they've shown that Eric can win in Tampa. You know, they, they finished off the Blues in St. Louis in the same kind of situation. I'm with you, man. I, I was I was feeling as confident as I would if they were playing at home. I thought the Avs could, could definitely take that game, and clearly they did. Yeah, and let's be honest, Tampa Bay power play was not very scary. I know there was no penalties in game five or six anyway because the refs were like, oh, no, what are penalties? We don't call those here <laughs> in the finals. Um, but I remember that frustrated the heck out of me against St. Louis. Every time they were on the power play, it was goal, goal, goal. Yep. I was like, oh, man, this PK is going to cost us. But I mean, in the finals, it was unreal. Yeah. Yeah. They were, I think they ended up like one for 17. And like that penalty kill that was so bad in that St. Louis series actually became a shining moment in the cup. Surprising. 
All right. Uh, so let's hear from Built Bar, and then uh, we're going to get into some of our free agents. And uh, you probably know exactly where we're going to start with this one, but where does uh, Producer Drew think some of our big free agents are going to go? Are they staying in Colorado or are they going elsewhere? But first, we have Built Bar. You know Built Bar. You love Built Bar. And they're from the people who invented the healthy and tasty energy bar that tastes more like a candy bar. Or if you want the Built Bar Puffs, they taste like a protein-infused marshmallow. Are you big on marshmallow, Producer Drew, or, or no? Because I we're split here. I hate marshmallow. Kyle loves it. Depends. In s'mores, yes. Mm. In cereal, no. How about a coconut brownie chunk puff? That sounds delicious. That's enticing, right? So uh, you can go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your entire order. Once again, that's pro. That's can you hear those fireworks in the background? Yeah, that is LOCKED15 for 15% off the best tasting protein bar on the market at built.com. All right, so we have free agents like every other team in the league, and I think a lot of people are turning their eyes to the Avalanche. Naturally, when you win the Stanley Cup, people are going to try to pluck some of your free agents away to help their team. Let's start with the obvious in Nazem Kadri. I mean, word is coming out that he is wanting, I heard, around 10. Yeah. Uh, did you hear that too? I saw in the neighborhood of eight to ten is what he's expected to get, which is crazy. That's that's a little bit. And I mean, I love you, Nas, but uh, I don't know. I, I got the vibes that this is like Gabe Landeskog version 2.0. Like Landeskog seemed like he wanted in the nine to ten range, and I think he tested the market, and it didn't really seem like it was there. So he came down to he's making seven. Are I you feeling think, the same way, or do you think someone's out there? That I think it's give? a bit different because Landis Cog had the loyalty thing here, and mm-hmm. I think he would have gotten more from St. Louis. That was the rumor that the Blues were going to give Landis Cog the money. And I think they honestly offered him nine, and nine was on the table, and he took a pay cut to come back to Colorado. I just can't. If I'm Kadri, this is my last contract. I'm going to make my career my big one. Do I take a pay cut to stay with the Avs? I already have the cup. And then what can Colorado really offer him? Five or six max if they want to keep Nachushkin and Lekanen? So... And even then, it's still not comfortable. So, yeah, if I'm Kadri, I'm cashing in my eight and a half, nine million dollars and going to get 45 points in Buffalo or something wherever he signs. <laughs> but you think he would do that? Do you think he would go from a Stanley Cup winning team and a team that has backed you through so much that you've been through? And, you know, money talks, this, man. I just, it does. It does. I, just, I mean, uh, it, but, but money talks, but money talk, money talking from, like you said, Buffalo, or I'm, I'm hearing Philly. A yeah. Lot. I don't think, see, Philly was the, I saw from Elliot Freeman, you said Philly was in on him, but now with Torts there, does Kadri seem like a guy who wants to play for Tortorella? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. There's some other people that were saying, like, I think he would, and I'm like, maybe you might be right, but I don't see that. I I don't see the two of them kind of coexisting. Yeah, I think it's, he's going to decide whether he wants $9 million from a middle-of-the-road team. Um, I think Buffalo is up and coming. I'll give them some credit. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe a playoff team next year, maybe two years from now. Or does he want to take a huge pay cut and stay in Denver? And I just, when it's the last contract of a guy's career, I can't see them not cashing in. If he was still 26, 27, and he could sign a four-year deal and stay here, I could see that. Okay. But because of his age, I think he just cashes in. Unfortunately, I want him back, but not at the price he's going to be getting. Yeah, do you, like, it It almost feels like he knows this is the last one. And, like, he might be looking for something a little bit closer to home. Like, like yeah. especially, like, to settle down, like, not go the Claude Giroux route and go to Florida, find somewhere to retire. But like when you hear those numbers, um, everything that you felt when it came to like loyalty in the players tribune article and everything he said about his time here in Colorado, it almost feels like, well, it was a stepping stone. Now he's going to go out for this contract and wherever he goes, you don't feel like he's going to find that same success. Yeah. So what, what if the difference between him staying and going is giving him eight years? Do you really want to give a 32 year old next season, eight years? Mm-hmm. So uh, you want to give him what four or five max, whereas mm-hmm. some free agent that he's going to get seven years somewhere and just have fun playing with Nazem Kadri when he's 38 years old. And you're going to have a Patrick Marlowe situation where you're trading a first mm-hmm. rounder to get rid of the guy. Yep. And his numbers this year are just ridiculous, but there, there's no it other doesn't season. match up. Yeah, no, there's no other season that's even close to what he's done this year. So, I mean, he did what he needed to do. He had an incredible year and a contract year. And I, I don't, I really don't see anybody giving him 10. I do see somebody, 
I'm hearing the Rangers too. I think the Rangers are high on him. I think because the Rangers like to be they, they've kind they of turned spending. this corner. What's that? Mm -hmm. I said they love spending money in New York. They do. Uh, and they've kind of become a, a more physical team. And that's obviously his MO. And he'll play that way. I If it's not Colorado, which I'm kind of leaning towards, like, I feel like we just don't have the money to, to sign him. And if he's not going to take a, a cut and if it's not the Avalanche, I just have a feeling it's the Rangers because it would be a good team, a team that was right on the doorstep. They have the money. They can pay him probably about eight, which I think is is enough for him. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, when you're a free agent, you're, you're going to shoot for the moon because you got to negotiate that. You can't start it. If you want eight, you don't start at eight. You start yeah, you at start nine at or 10, 10 yeah, and then yeah. you you come down. So I, I, I just my gut feeling is is New York. It's just, just because they're, they're a good team. If they sign Kadri or go after him, that means Strom's gone. And Strom's 28, he's four years younger. I just don't know. Like, do you really want Nazem Kadri as your second line center over Strom right now? I, mm. Strom's probably cheaper too. I, I don't know. It's tough. It's a good I question. Mean, yeah. I it's mean, New York's a good call though. Cause if they, if Strom walks and gets a big payday somewhere else, Kadri could easily replace him. So I could definitely. see Calgary going after him as well. If Goudreau walks and goes to the devils, like it's interesting. Rumored. Um, yeah, he's going to have a lot of options, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, what about Andre Burkowski? I, I kind of feel like he's another one who's kind of following Kadri out the door. Yeah, I mean, I like Berkey, but I think he's gone as well. I don't think you can afford to keep him. It's going to be, what What do you guys think, four and a half, five million dollars to keep Burkowski around? And, Which is about what he made, right? Right, so, but he's um, now going to be third line Burkowski. He's not going to be a top six forward on this team, I don't think. Oof, I don't, I mean, it, well, maybe some games he is, some games he's not. He's right, right, so right. up and down. If, if, if you know, he's getting those uh, hat tricks and followed it up by a three-point game and a four-point game, yeah, then he's going to be on the second line. And then when he's not doing those things, you move him. He's just one of those guys that goes up and down the lineup. Yeah. I don't I just, know. I'm, I'm so torn on him. I'd rather and, pay Nachushkin. Exactly. I would. And what we were just talking about with Jost, I feel that same feeling for Burakovsky. Like, we're hoping and wishing like for potential, like we know you can shoot. We know you can get these like snipe shot goals, but we have to wait 15, 16 games before you actually net one. Like it's, it's not consistency that you want, especially at 4 million. Like you can go out and find something relatively close. No one's hot or cold as much as Burakovsky. Like mm -hmm. they'll be like, Oh, he scored four games in a row. Oh, he's gone 33 games without a goal. And you're like, what? <laughs> It's a, that's that's Burakovsky for you, but I mean, yeah. overtime winner game one. I mean, we'll love him forever. But but didn't you want him on the ice there and and, and you know in the Stanley Cup final after he got hurt? Yeah, I wanted him out there because when you're going up against a goalie like that, he, he has the ability. He has ability to score. I mean, yes, he's one of the best shooters on the team. I'll give him that. Uh, it's just, yeah. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of questions. If he comes yeah. back, I'm not gonna be upset. Like, oh, yeah. like, oh four million dollars Burakovsky. That's whatever. It's he's a good player, but. At the same time, I'll be like, ah, $4 million for Burakovsky. Like, you better score goals. Like, <laughs> right. It's hot and cold. I don't know. So what about Darcy Kemper? Um, I, I like the guy. Yeah. Uh, it's another one where we're, Kyle and I are kind of split here. Like, Kyle's a Kyle, you don't like Kemper. Friends. I am he a like, Team Frankie guy. He's a friend. Yeah. 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 He likes Fran Francois more. It's not like, I don't think he dislikes Darcy Kemper. But um, I, I really like the guy. And when you're looking at the – free agents for goalies it's slim pickings this oh. offseason so i think the, the, you know but he might you might need to increase him a little bit you know what i mean and i and i feel a lot of people were really on him for the postseason and i get that but then it came out that he was still struggling with that eye issue yeah. so i think you have to take that into account and kind of say like wow well he didn't play all that bad even though he had this eye issue I think the Avs like him. I think he likes being here with all, you know, his career where he's been with these teams that just, you know, not the greatest. And now he wins a cup. I think he wants to come back. I think the Avs and Kemper make this work. I really do. I think he comes back on, let's say, three year, 15 million. So five per. Okay. Um, do I want him back? Not necessarily, because I agree that Frankie could be the starter. And I I really like a Noonan. I know people are uh, sleeping on him. He's, he's going to be their starter in two years, guys. Yeah. Um, and I think if Kemper's here, that gives him. I think Frankie's mad and asks for a trade in a year or two because, like, he wants to be a starter as well. And I do love the right handed glove. I know people like, get thrown <laughs> off that. It's just cool to watch. I remember Jose Theodore. Um, yep. 
but yeah, I think Kemper's back because the Avs trust him. And yeah, with the eye injury, did you see that picture of him in the hotel where it's like yes. it looked like it was fused shut? Yes. Um, and he won them the Stanley Cup. I know people look at the save percentage. Oh, it was only 902 or whatever. He he won the games he needed to. When you get 17 shots against in a game, your save percentage isn't going to be that high. Um, so yeah, I'll be fine either way. If he walks, I lo- love the opportunity of giving Frankie and Anunin. I don't if he walks, I don't think they sign a goal. Like, I've seen some Mark Andre Fleury stuff, but I think if Kemper's yeah. gone, I think Sackick uses that money elsewhere. I don't think he signs a goalie. Really? You know, I don't think they roll with those two. Um, but if he comes back, whatever. I'm happy. Oh man. I don't I, I and like I completely that. agree with that. Like <laughs> I feel like Frankie, it's it's like he's been touted like he's the backup but he has that potential to be a starter and he was going to take that job from grubauer at one point and like with mm-hmm. a noonan right behind him like i feel like that's an incredible one-two punch that's never been tried like frankie's never really been given the reins and i feel like well, yes darcy won us the cup but i feel like it's a little bit of a grubauer effect like kind of improve the play because of the defense and i feel like we fall in love with them just a little too much so if he walks it, it's not going to hurt us as bad as we think yeah and i mean let's be honest if they resign grubauer we're probably in the same spot right now mm-hmm. like grubauer could, was good enough to win a cup and now sure. he's making way too much money in seattle i mean yeah someone might offer kemper seven million dollars and then you're like okay see you later like mm-hmm. just, you don't want to match anything over five i don't want kemper back maybe five and a half yeah, I'd be okay with that. I would be okay. I, I just can't imagine. Like, if, if he goes elsewhere, if someone offers him, like, way too much and he goes elsewhere, I just don't see the Avs and Sackick staying pat because now your goalies are, you know, and I like Pablo Francos, but, you know, he's unproven as an A1 starter. And you have a, a prospect, a highly, highly touted prospect, two really unproven guys. And you want that for a Stanley Cup? returning hey team? if you need I mean, someone at the deadline you sackick's not afraid to throw away those picks have you seen the draft picks they have in the yeah, next three years there's nothing. none and so <laughs> i think if they needed a goalie uh, at the deadline they'll trade for one but i think you roll into the season with that duo okay all right and and finally obviously you touched on them i think uh outside of signing nathan mckinnon to an extension um i i, I gotta think you know val Nichuskin is your number one priority i think this gets yeah. done you could you could toss a coin on what's going to get done first, a McKinnon extension or Val Nichuskin signs a new deal, but I think they are going to uh, put this to rest quickly. I think the McKinnon deal takes a while just because I like there's, he's in no rush to sign it, so I think it'll be after free agency's done once Sackick sees how much money he has invested. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Val gets... Yeah, it's tough because if he goes in free agency market, free, if he tests free agency, he's going to get offered 7 or $8 million. You think but, so? He likes it here, which is good. Um, he knows that Sackick took a chance on him when no one else would when he was bought mm-hmm. out. So I think he's willing to give the Avs a little discount, but not too much of a discount. So I think six, six million is probably going to get it done, six, six and a half. Um, but if he goes in free agency and he's got that seven and a half on the table, it's going to be very enticing for him. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to come down to the wire with him the same way he did with Lannis Cog, I think. What do you think, Kyle? I I definitely like if you could get nuke for six, I think everybody feels happy. And I think like you don't have to move like you're you could stay where you are, stay comfortable. I think nuke would stay for six. But if he's going to go chasing for any of that, that's going to be an expensive contract to move in a year or two because you're not going to have an avalanche team around you. Do you give him eight years? You think he's young enough for that? Uh, I would I would go maybe six. Um, I I don't know. I don't know about eight. Those those uh, eights, those really long contracts scare me. I, I mean, the I cap would. is supposed to go up in right. two years. Depends on the price. If it's eight times six, I'm fine with it because then you, you can deal with that down the line. But if it's – I just think that that eighth year is what's going to keep guys here. It's just mm-hmm. you yeah. want to give those eight <laughs> years. For Nechuskin, I might. I, I, I yep. think so highly of the guy. And I think like what you said nails it. He's really appreciative of the Avs reaching out to him and keeping his career alive. So, And he loves yeah. playing in bed in our system, let's be honest. Yeah. All right, let's hear from Rock Auto, and then we'll get to the grade for Nicholas Abe Kubel. And a couple of more questions about this Avalanche team and where they stand in the grand scheme of the Colorado Avalanche 
franchise history. But first, Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. So why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand that their warehouse happens to carry? You have a computer with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. It's a family-run business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. The prices at Rock Auto are reliably low for every customer, so go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us section so they know that we sent you to them. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Uh, yes, I, I memorized that one too. <laughs> That's impressive. Watching. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, all right. Nicholas Abe Kubel is first up for our season grades. We do these every off season. We do them alphabetically. So, and uh, we're not doing guys like uh, Yusuf Anunen because you know there's really that, that's incomplete. Yeah. So uh, for Nicholas Abe Kubel, we put it up on Twitter to vote. I started putting it up on Instagram this year, so the people of Instagram have uh, a vote and uh, what they have to say. And uh, for those guys, so both. Twitter and Instagram gave Nicholas Abe Kubel a B for what? a season grade <laughs> on Twitter. 49% gave them a B on Instagram. 58% gave him a B. So we will start with producer drew and uh, we don't, you know, we have people as guests all the time, but not a lot in the off season where we've had people, come on and are able to give their grade. And like I said, before we even started, I'm sorry, it's not like camel car or anything like that, but uh, you are, you are tasked with grading Nicholas Abe Kubel. Go for it. I'm going to be nice and give him a D minus. So he's not, he doesn't completely fail, but he's okay. borderline not failing only because he, he broke the Stanley cup and it was funny to me, but besides that, his play on the ice, <laughs> uh, absolutely brutal to me i mean i think he was the worst player on the team this season uh by wow. far i think he should have been back on waivers i'm sorry um but honestly i don't know what you could watch of this guy this season and be like wow so glad we picked him up i mean he was just there I mean, he was like a body like you put anybody out there that's nikolai Bell. so yeah i'm sorry d minus all right. Well, here before Kyle gives his uh, some stats for Abe Kubel: eleven goals, eleven assists for twenty-two points. He's a plus 14, 41 penalty minutes. His average time on ice was just shy of ten minutes, so he had nine minutes and forty-nine seconds. His average time of ice in sixty-seven games played, two game-winning goals, and a fourteen-point-one shooting percentage. So wait, wait, read his playoff stats. They're so good. <laughs> just playoffs i can bring those up if you want uh i got, I, I got them for if you want okay um while you bring those up kyle what do you got for a grade i have to agree with producer drew here like i this is a it's a flat d for me like like seeing like the results earlier i've been keeping track of it like throughout the day like seeing where everything's going i'm like because doing the locked on avalanche like Twitter spaces, like you're watching and you're talking about these players live, like during the game. And there are so many times that you're like, is Abe Kubel out there? Is he hurt? What is he doing? But then you see, oh, there goes number 16. Okay, he's fine, but he just disappears. And I've never, he's invisible. It's amazing how you can get on the ice and just that enclosed uh, playing surface and disappear. It's mind boggling. But Abe Kubel, that's his X Men ability. It's it's amazing. I, it's a D. Like there's not other. Yeah, like crashing the cup is what you remember. But other than that, I, so his playoff stats: fourteen games played, zero goals, zero assists, plus two. What a player! So how, how many total points is that? That's zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, like for for me, like you guys are in the D range. Twitter and Instagram are in the B range, which did surprise me a little bit. Um, I'm in between there. Like I, I want to give the guy a C and I, I'm not going to grade him like compared to our superstars. You know what I mean? Like he, he needs his own grade where he fits in on this team. And I kind of just feel like with, you know, being a waiver wire pickup and lasting like the entirety of the season, I think is, uh, you know, is, is pretty impressive. And yeah, Kyle, there, there were times where he was invisible, 
but there were times where he was not. There were times where the, that fourth line really got things going and really cycled through some pucks and kept offensive possessions. And sometimes they did end in, in a goal. And, and you know, I, I don't know, like I'm not sitting here saying like he, he was the most impressive waiver wire pickup I've ever seen in my life. But I don't know, like for someone that came in um, and let's not forget how he started when when the abs picked him up and those first like three, four games, people were like, why did nobody else pick this guy up? I think he mm-hmm. felt like he, he, he kind of slotted in with the abs like pretty good. He's got good speed. No, he's not going to blow you away with stats, but I was more than impressed with him over the course of the year, and he held his own. He held his own. So I, I think he's just right around that average for me, being you know a bottom six guy, and I think he's just a solid C for me. I just like he's one of the. I think it's like four players on the Avs that were negative Corsi on the season, and he was one of them. So mm. it shows like he didn't even drive play when he was on the ice. It's just no. I, what, would he have been in the lineup if not for the injuries in the playoffs? No. Probably not. Probably not. And I think there wasn't there one where he did get scratched when when yeah. there was yeah. Um, yeah. I mean here, let, well, let me list off the bottom six. You tell me who you would keep over him. Okay. Uh, so Newhook, are you keeping Knack no. over yeah. Newhook? JT no. Confer? No. Logan O'Connor? No. Andrew Cogliano? Uh, no. And then Darren Helm. No, definitely. And not. Nico Sturm. Because Sturm is more a physical guy, I, I like that aspect of it. So you mean so, he doesn't even fit in the lineup before? Right. Helping. So okay. So but when he was in there, I thought he did okay. Like I didn't think feel like he was a, that much of a liability. And and I, you know, you're right. You're right. Like I don't I don't want to sit here and say, like, oh, he had this, you know, great season and a surprising season. Uh, but for a guy that not much was expected of him. I thought I thought he he just kind of held his own for the season. I yeah. I said like in the last two weeks of the season, where is that garbage time point of the year? Like I said, for all the bandwagon fans, this is your new Renee Bork and <laughs> Gabe Bork, like just occupying a space on the roster. Like that's exactly what that was. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, Jan Stastny and Paul Stastny when they put. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that's what we got. So, uh, kind of a, a polarizing player, I guess, in terms of, of grading. Do you think though. he's back? No, I, I, I don't. I, I mean, it could be one of those things where, you know, Sackick feels like uh, he, he got a good one on a waiver wire that nobody else got. So, I'm going to keep him just for that aspect. But I don't think Joe Sackick works that way. Um, wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't surprise me if he goes. Wouldn't surprise me if he stays for just for some depth because injuries are an issue, you know? Yeah, I mean, as a twentieth forward, or, or sorry, not twentieth forward, fourteenth forward uh, to keep us a healthy scratch, uh, might be worth it. And, and you know, the Abs, I think they want to start incorporating some of these young prospects into the mix, so that might kind of force his way out too. Yeah, I mean, it's looking like Newhook's going to be their second line center next season, so we'll see how that goes. Could be, could be. Yeah. Um, all right, so just a couple more things I want to get to, and, and then we'll wrap this thing up, but Kyle and I talk a lot about these next two things I want to get to. Um, and one, one is, we, you know, everybody talks about, you know, the Mount Rushmore of so-and-so and for the avalanche, if you're going to put a Mount Rushmore for the avalanche up, I think you're going to have obviously Sackick, Forsberg, Wa, and then the fourth is kind of up for like debate. Do you think, well, let me ask you this in two, two phrases. Who would be your fourth? And then fast forward 15 years from now. And there, I think you're going to have like a log jam for that fourth and maybe seeping over into the third between guys like McKinnon and McCarr and even Landeskog, who's going to be so important yeah. to this team. So, so start with that. Who would be your fourth? Right now, if I had to pick a fourth, it's no one current because they haven't played enough for the team or mm-hmm. done much. It's Adam Foote, I think. Uh, yeah. He played the longest out of any defenseman for them. He wore the C. Um, he was just the, the consummate pro when he was on Colorado. Um, and he came back, and it was amazing when he came back to Colorado. And I just don't think – if you're picking a shutdown defenseman in Colorado Avalanche history, your first pick's Adam Foote. So I think he would be my selection for – best defenseman they've ever had not counting bork obviously because he came around and played two seasons sure. or a season and a half but i think foot's the go-to guy for me there and then like i said fast forward 15 years from now, 20 years from now how does that how, how does that mount rushmore change i mean 
I mean, if Makar stays healthy, he's number one. He's the best player to ever play for their team if he continues this, what he's doing. Uh, ahead of Nathan McKinnon, you think? 100%. Yeah. I think he's already the best player on the team. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, it's still McKinnon. It's Nate Dog. He was hurt. He would have got 105 points if he was healthy, blah, 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 blah. I just think Makar's changing the game. He's the best skater mm-hmm. I've ever seen in my life. Um, and if you had to trade one of them right now, I'm trading McKinnon. That sounds crazy. Obviously, you don't want to trade either, but sure. if you had to oh, trade yeah, one. Yeah. You're trading McKinnon, and I think McCarr would be number one, or sorry, number two behind Joe Sackick uh, if he continues the way he's going. I don't know if McKinnon cracks the top four unless he gets another cup. I, I think mean, Forsberg and Waugh stay ahead of him. I was going to say, like, those three guys between Sackick, Forsberg, and Waugh are, are kind of like they're already chiseled in. Exactly. Yeah. You, you can't really remove those three ever, probably. I mean, Forsberg is the only one you can argue for because he got hurt. Like he didn't play as much. So I mean, okay. but I think Sack and Wah for sure. Like you can't, change, you can't ever get rid of those guys. Right. And what what about Landis Gogner? I mean, do you feel? Are you just going based on you know pure stats and what they mean to the game, or what they mean to this team? Because I think when it's all said and done, Landis Gog is going to be up there as one of the greats of all time in this franchise. The only thing I'll say about Landis Cog is he's been overshadowed his entire career. Like he's always been, he's never been the guy, mm-hmm. which is why I don't think he'll ever make that top four. It, it was kind of like when Hayduke was the captain. Like he was just like, oh, he's the captain. He's amazing, but he's not the guy. Yeah. Um, I just think because McKinnon's been with Landis Cog this whole time, he's got to fight off Nate for that spot. And I don't think he can. I mean, when it comes to pure like dominance overall, it's Landis Cog like 200 feet, but. I just don't think he has it just because Nate's been there the whole time. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and finally, th- this team, in terms of where they stand in, you know, overall in the franchise, that's another thing Kyle and I talk about. We were talking about during the regular season, like if if a Stanley Cup happens, where does this team stand uh, as, as the greatest in franchise history? And now that it's happened, I want to have that conversation, but I also want to have it a little bit later because emotions are high right now. And we want to say this is the greatest team in hockey history, not just yeah. uh, avalanche history. But if, if you can kind of, you know, remove the the uh, excitement about what just happened, what do you think? Where, where does this team fit? I don't think it's the best Avs team ever just because I think they were too reliant still on their top guys. I mean, you saw it even in the playoffs um, and through the regular season. If the top six wasn't scoring, it's tough for this Colorado team to do well. I mean, the one game against St. Louis is the outlier when Comfer and Helm both scored the goals. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd say the 0-1 team is still the best team Colorado's ever put on the ice. But I mean, maybe a year from now I'm saying otherwise because we're I looking back on this team. But I think right now we're in the honeymoon stage, so everyone's going to be like, oh, it's this team, it's this team. Right. But on If you look at the actual gameplay, they're still too reliant on the big guys, I think. Interesting. Yeah. I've... I've, I've, I've kind of falling in love with this team because like four losses throughout the playoffs like it's that's a feat it was an easy path though i know people don't like saying that but like nashville without soros was pretty bad and like the oilers pretty bad defensively (laughs) i mean you still had i think the oh one team was swept both those teams as well yeah easily easily it's it's one of those that like everybody wanted to put all these like vasileski you wanted to put Bennington in the way you wanted to put McDavid like they overcame all of those big names and like they should lose because of this well they they didn't and they swept yeah. Connor McDavid so it's in hindsight depending on these careers of Bennington Vasilevsky McDavid I think it this one might get a little bit sweeter over time yeah I mean you're probably not wrong it's just right now it's just did the playoffs not feel a little bit too easy to you guys? Like, I mean, that's probably a credit to their team, how good the Colorado Avalanche were. But like sure. watching the first and third round, I was like, why is this so easy? Like this shouldn't be this easy. Like the St. Louis series, I was stressed out watching against the Oilers. I was like, that team sucks. How did they make the Western <laughs> Conference final? It was very surprising to me. I thought it was going to be Calgary the whole way. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It just felt weirdly easy, especially once Bennington went down against St. Louis. I was like, okay, well. If they blow this, they could blow this because of the, the monkey that's on their back. But at the same time, those first three rounds felt like you knew Colorado was going to win that entire time. Yeah. So give me a uh, way too early prediction for next season. There hasn't been a, a, a draft pick hasn't been made. A free agent hasn't been signed. What do you think the Avs do next year? 
like in free agency or where do they finish next no season? where do they finish are they, are they following this up with another stanley cup championship or is it going to be a little bit tougher and is it like gonna, i said it's no, gonna nobody's going to hold you to this don't worry about no, it no but. it's going to be tougher i'm just thinking right now if i had to decide based on them not getting cadred back in my mind and having new hook as their second line center unless they get drew or someone in free agency i'll say they make the western conference finals and get upset by the vegas golden knights oh, and jack Eichel in full swing and I'll be very upset about it, but Don't. I just think that team on paper is so good, and they're not missing the playoffs again. Oh, that crushed me. <laughs> Crush it. There's, there's not a team I despise more. Than oh, yeah, I can't say them. Just, but on paper, they're so stacked. They are good. I know. And that's part of the reason dreams. why I hate them. You crushed my <laughs> dreams. Uh, all right, man. I really appreciate you coming. Hey. Why, how come you don't like eggnog, bro? I saw I saw oh, that thing you put dude, up. Like, disgusting. It's just send like, me. Is that a? I need. Where'd you get those cookies? I need them. Oh, send I saw they're in the me. grocery store by my house. I was like, what the hell are these? Who made these? Like, it's just, <laughs> it must be a Canadian thing because I saw all the my American followers like we don't have those here. I was like, yeah, because oh, they're man. disgusting. Probably. I I want to try eggnog cookies. I don't like eggs. I like an omelet. I I don't. I'm not a big like. Oh, omelet, you like eggnog? But it's I just raw eggs egg. and sugar. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Too? I don't know, man. I, I, I love eggnog. So uh, I got to find me some eggnog cookies because I yeah. think I'd love those things, dude. Fair. You got to send me some. Um, all right, man. Really appreciate you coming on. I mean, people know you, but why don't you throw out where they can find you? Uh, yeah. Stay tuned to our stuff. Steve's dang it. Steve's hat picks. Actually, the season's over on those. So trade trees will be coming back. So if you have any oh, trade trees that you want to yes. see, recommendations, shoot them my way on Twitter. Um, we'll be at the draft this week in Montreal, trying out some poutines and, uh, doing a live draft stream with Dangle. It'll be a good time. So uh, we'll get to watch where it's Colorado have four picks, none in the first or second round. So yeah. it'll be a boring weekend for me, but it'll be a good yeah. time. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for the Lindros and the Duchesne trade oh tree. Yeah, yeah. Do you like those recommendations? Hey, the Lindros one's so good. Lindros oh. one, the Gretzky one is is fantastic. Yeah, people don't realize it takes a long time to I research these imagine. trade trees. People are like, oh, just do this one, do this one. I'm like, yeah. Do you have 10 days to go back and look at all these trades and these players yeah. I've never heard of in my life? Is there is there one that's ready you can announce or or you don't have one ready to go? Uh, no, we don't have any that I think we were looking at doing Trevor Linden because that's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll probably be the finale this season. But yeah, besides that, we don't have usually we do eight episodes. So that'll probably be the eighth. We don't okay. have the first seven selected yet. Maybe we'll go back and look at the cadre trade tree just to bother Dangle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that would be wonderful. So uh, definitely check those out. If you guys haven't watched yeah. those before uh fantastic videos on youtube with those trade trees Lo absolutely love those things so um thanks for coming on producer drew really really appreciate it and uh we will probably definitely do this again maybe before the season starts when we know what the roster is finalized and kind of make some more solid predictions then yeah thanks for having me on anytime guys uh once this once the roster is finalized bring me on we'll do a season prediction show let's do it Let's do it. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and making your first listen of the day. For producer Drew, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, I'm Chris Maselli. This is the Avalanche, Locked on Avalanche podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow.